Hi there and welcome to this podcast about 10 intriguing iPad apps for educators. Some of you, um, like myself, might have been lucky enough in the last couple of months to have an iPad unboxing experience. Um, there's been a lot of talk about um, this device being mainly good for consuming content, not so great for creating it, but we're going to have a look um, at some apps that do a little bit of both um, in this uh, quick little podcast. So here's um, my current home screen. You can see some of the ones um, I've chosen there. PhotoPad's a great one for doing the photo editing that I've had to do as part of this. So here we are for consuming. Here's Time Bureau of Meteorology app. And uh, it's just a beautiful um, type app with the uh, time and weather data. We'll just um, sit there when you've got your iPad docked um, looking pretty, basically. Um, very nice. Uh, another one um, that sort of comes under that consuming content category is the Australian it's a digital newspaper, basically, and um, works quite nice. You can know, just tap around on the page and um, slide menus up and down, make definitely a different uh, newspaper reading experience. And here's uh, Romeo and Juliet. Fantastic uh, map for um, consuming content. It's all about uh, Romeo and Juliet, obviously. You've got videos that you can watch, animations of the different scenes. You can um, interact uh, with the different characters, there's a relationship map that uh, you can zoom around. There's actually analysis of uh, different scenes, all this kind of content that's uh, beautifully presented. Great for um, probably even high school students, especially, uh, I would say. But um, beyond just uh, these kind of apps that let you um, look at content and interact with it, um, I want to look at some great apps for the iPad that also allow you to create your own content. So here's um, one called Puplet is actually my favorite in terms of uh, mind mapping. It allows you to do all kinds of things creatively with the colors, the background, the shapes, add in um, pictures, do direct writing or typing instead uh, to get your thoughts um, gathered in together. So that's a really good one. There's a Poplet Lite, which is free. Here is Audio Note. Now it does what the Live Scribe Smart Pen does, that after you've typed in your notes and had the audio recorder going at the same time, it basically allows you to then just play Tap on the words to rehear the audio that was playing at the time when you were typing those notes, and you can add more notes in. Okay, here's Caster. I haven't had too much of a play with this, but it rec allows you to record multiple audio tracks, uh, mix them together, and then to actually publish them as a um, RSS or podcast feed. Here is Real Director. Now, this is the app which I've used to create uh, this podcast. We'll look at a few different bits and pieces of it, which is um, interesting now in the context of the iMovie um, being released for the iPhone soon. But as far as the iPad goes, the much bigger screen is fantastic for video editing. And that's where Real Director really shines. Here's some of the options when you're tapping on one of your individual clips, of photos, or movies that you can crop it. You can add text overlays. You can add transitions before and after. Here's a quick look at um, what the transition menu looks like. There's probably about 20 different um, transitions that you can choose from. If you're editing video, you can um, bring up this menu which allows you to uh, use a slider to trim the actual bits of video to exactly um, where you might want them to be, mark them in and out. When you're doing audio recording, uh, wherever you want, you can just tap it and it'll start. And the blue bar is nice because it actually sort of shows you um, clearly where your audio is going. So anyway, here's a video uh, which covers some of these same things. Um, and um, I'll talk in a little bit about how I got this video onto my iPad and uh, what I used for that. So here we are, we've opened up this um, file to edit it and you can see me tapping on there to this um, screenshot from the Australian. So I wanted to do some panning and zooming on that and you can set it so it's a bit like a Ken Burns effect. Works quite nicely. And you can set the seconds down the bottom there, how long you want it to go for that particular effect, uh, effect etc. Um, of course there's the transitions and here we are, we can just flick through them iPhone style until we've um, found the one that we want. Gives you that nice little live preview of the uh, transition. Just by tapping on the uh, top right there we can also choose whether we want to input. So if it's photos or videos, you might have also seen some other options um, and that we'll come back to. Here's how we um, do the text overlays. So you can type your text in there, choose from all the different fonts that are available, quite a lot on the iPad. And of course change the size, whatever it is. 
and even then the style where you would actually like them to be placed on the screen and um, whether you want some sort of shading behind etc so a lot of flexibility there you'll recognize a bit similar to uh, iMovie yep so you can add recorded sounds this is what we were talking about before set it up tap where you want it to start and off it goes and the nice blue there to give us that uh, visual tap and stop and then you can move that around etc wherever you want to um, other options are imported music but you can also do stuff from the pasteboard. I didn't have anything uh, copied at this point. That was compatible, but it's nice to be able to just add straight from your pasteboard. And like I said, you can have um, music set up as well. So back to the sort of home screen, where you choose basically to render your movie once you're finished editing it. And then off it goes and turns it into a movie that you can email if it's short or save to your um, iPad uh, for putting through iTunes um, if it's a bigger one. Okay, the, how I got that video from my iPhone onto the iPad was using Mover Plus, which is a nice little visual one. You load it up into one device, flick it across to the other one. And this is um, the Mover Plus for iPad is still coming, so I was using the iPhone version. Works really well and nice visual for getting um, your files back and forth between the two different devices. Here's another one great for creating content called Type Drawing. So basically it allows you to choose um, a color for your pen and a font and a size and then wherever you touch on the screen you get this wonderful text you can change the text that's going on there you can change the background so you can actually create some um, fantastic little um, artifacts there something that would be fantastic for students to play around with another one which is um, iPad only is um, called two screens and the great thing about two screens is it allows you to use the VGA out not just to be able to show maybe a keynote file but what you can do is actually load files in so any kinds of PDFs other uh, documents and files and send them out through the VGA as well as uh, web pages as well so all within this one app so you're not even having to switch back and forth between different ones uh, pretty capable it is uh, here is um, two screens on my iPad plugged in and what it looks like uh, up on the big screen and there's also for VGA output another great option, an app called Paperdesk. And you can set up a notebook which is for VGA output and it's like a whiteboard. Have this, um, have your iPad sitting on the desk. You can type and draw and whatever you're typing and drawing actually comes up onto the big screen um, as a projected whiteboard, which is um, pretty nice. Okay, so that's um, a very quick overview of 10 intriguing apps for educators. Hope you find something there that might be useful in your classroom. And um, thanks very much. This was produced entirely on the iPad.